you did not like Islam, you did not like Muslims, you hated Islam, you hated Muslims. Yes, the ignorance that we live nowadays in society is what led me to Islam. The hatred that I had inside of me, uh, not knowing, um, that's what led me. Um, I didn't know anything about Islam. I only heard from people what it was. I, I wanted to learn what it was. When you officially accepted Islam in front of hundreds of people on a Friday after Juma Salah. It was very emotional to me. It was very emotional to feel that I am welcome, that I am, that I feel that I am at home. Mm -hmm. I finally made it home. It's like coming back to your town after so many years being away. And finally, and finally you're there. Dawah Services now offering a special debate and Umrah package in December 2019. A 10-day trip from December 9th to December 19th, 2019. Average cost is $3,000. The group will be led by Sheikh Shafayat. For more details, you can contact Al Hikmat Dawah Services at 954-986-0158, or you can email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. If you would like to dedicate copies of one of these publications as Sadaqa Jariya, continuous blessings for your parents or dear ones who have passed away, or fi Allah in the path of Allah, please give us a call so we can place your names on these dedicated publications. You can call us at 954-986-0158 or you can also visit us at www.alhikmat.com. Allah is the creator of different faces. Allah is the creator of all races. Allahu, 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 Allah. Royal Bengal Trading, importer, exporter, wholesaler of Bangladeshi Indo Pak groceries and spices. We specialize in various authentic Indian masalas, juices, flowers, rices, and spices. We offer exclusive brands as Ocean Pearl, Shan, National, Tilda, Himani, and many, many more. We're located at 36B Coroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Shiguanas, Trinidad, and Tobago. You can call us at 473-4676 or call 476-3117. Email us at wahabdk at gmail.com. Now open Sajida exclusive for all of your Islamic and casual wear. We carry a large selection of silk route and al karam gowns, scarves, hijabs, hijab pins and many other accessories. We have exclusive Swarovski gold filled and sterling silver jewelry. We are located in store 143, Caroni Savannah Road, Charlieville, Chiguanas, located on the opposite side of TNT Chicken Hut. For more info, you can call 328-6682 or 295-5400. With over 20 years of traveling experience, Al Hikmat Services is offering exclusive 2019 tours for India and Dubai. On October 13th through October 23rd, visiting holy sites, Dodge Mahal, and many other historical sites. 
These groups will be led by Sheikh Shafayed. For more details, you can contact Al Hikmat Dawa Services at 1 800 804 0267 or at 954 986 0158, or you can email us at al hikmat at al hikmat.com. Since 9-11, there has been a great fear of Islam. We need Muslims, I always say, to speak up in this yes. country. Much of our Islamic community is perceived to be insular. Most Americans have never met a Muslim or are not aware of having met a Muslim. Most people don't have enough education in terms of what the entirety of Islam represents. It's very easy to hate someone or to put stereotypes on people that you've never interacted with. But do you think if Muslims were more integrated in society, in America, in the United States of America, then there would have been less anti-Muslim scenario? I think it's even more important that our clergy uh, speak up. They are, after all, the moral force in our community. You see, the Islam that is celebrated is one which opens its doors. Having this type of dialogue um, in terms of uh, a community outreach or something that Muslims have to do is go out just like you do in inviting uh, non-Muslims to the iftar. That yeah. a lot, and you do a lot of speaking to mixed groups. We have to change the language from us versus them to a language of we. I believe that if we can stand together against the forces of hatred and be unified in this country, then we can do wonderful things. Bringing us together to enhance the beauty of humankind. I think religion this. can be such a, a powerful force for unity. Of course. We've made it into this, like, uh, you know, powerful force for disunity. Keep trying to understand each other and, and care for each other and keep building a, a, a world community because that, I believe that that's what, what God wants for, for us all. And I'm in their mosques and they're in my temple and um, it's been a, a phenomenal experience. I've had a very warm and welcoming experience in, from all the brothers and sisters in the community that every human being is either your brother in faith or brother in humanity. In Arabic, the word is لِتَعَارَفُ So that you will learn to understand one another. And this is the truth of what it should be. You see, this is why I am so pleased to come here today, to support the work of Al-Hikmat. Uh, the kind of intolerance and the violence that we see uh, across the globe is mm -hmm. rooted in ignorance, which we can overcome by teaching. Yes. Also yes. rooted in fear, which mm -hmm. we can overcome by experiencing, where we can actually live in each other's presence. You know, it's rooted in this um, myopic kind of my way only, rather mm -hmm. than this understanding mm -hmm. that maybe all of us have more in common and at the core of who we are is this truly global family that we belong to. I'd like to say what a joy and pleasure it is to have Sheikh Shafayat as my friend, as my teacher, as my co-worker in the vineyard of Allah, God, where we work together to make this world a better place, to do God's work, mm -hmm. to do the work which we are commanded to do as human beings. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to my journey to Islam on Al Hikmah TV. 24-7 online. Today it is indeed a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Sister Marta Escobar. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. Right. Marta Escobar is a paralegal by profession and is someone who has recently accepted Islam. So we will be talking to Marta about her experience what she likes about Islam, what she doesn't like about Islam, etc., etc., etc. So, 
matter. Let's begin by asking you, where are you from originally? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for inviting me, and it's a pleasure to be here with you at this moment. Um, what led me to Islam? Um, I will say the ignorance, the ignorance that we live nowadays in society is what led me to Islam. The hatred that I had inside of me, uh, not knowing, um, that's what led me. Um, I didn't know anything about Islam. I only heard from people what it was. I, I wanted to learn what it was. So what are you saying that you did not like Islam, you did not like Muslims, you hated Islam, you hated Muslims? Yes. Wow, that's interesting. So where are you from originally? I am from Costa Rica. Uh, and, and how long now have you been living in the United States of America? Uh, on and off for 32 years. Oh, interesting. Yes. 32 <laughs> years. Indeed, inshallah. Wow, mashallah, <laughs> mashallah. Yes. So, again, back to that point, what, what, what are those things that you hated about Islam um, and Muslims? Well, the not knowing. So, we, much. we understand because of lack of um, education. Yes, indeed. Ignorance. Yes, you indeed. You hated Islam and Muslims. Yes, indeed. But what are some of those things you did not like about Islam and Muslims? Um, I heard a lot um, when it comes down to the men, um, the raping of children, raping of women, having extra maritals, uh, having more than one wife, uh, the misunderstanding of Islam. It's, uh, it takes you to a different path, a different way, and that way it's hate. So you got all those information from the media? From the media. Or from and friends and associates? That they don't have no clue what Islam is about. They haven't even studied Islam, so they're being fed by other people that who they think they know Islam and they really don't have no clue what Islam is about. Mm -hmm. So um, I didn't have no Muslim friends until maybe three years ago, mm -hmm. I can say, or four years ago. And I had this brother who had me on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I have no Muslims and I said, you know what, let me go ahead and accept them. Let me find out through him maybe I can find out what Islam is about. Mm -hmm. And that's where I took my first step. Oh, interesting. Yes. Interesting. I was able to add him up to my Facebook and in his questions, he had asked me anything about Islam. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If you have any question, ask me. And I did. That's how I started. I first asked, what's Islam? Mm -hmm. What is Islam? Uh, who is the God of Islam? Um, and he sent me uh, all the information that I can probably request and uh, in within three days mm -hmm. I already had more than 200 <laughs> information. So, so you just started and then you started reading and searching all about Islam? Eh? Yes. Okay, so now that you started searching about Islam and reading about Islam, do you remember what is that? point that sort of click and started making you think that you should like Islam and Islam is beautiful. What was that? What was the, maybe the first thing? Um, I was trying to make peace with myself, mm -hmm. trying to make peace with my family, trying to make peace with the world, with society, um, with my, my parents, mm -hmm. um, overall to have peace in my life. I was tired of feeling uh, emotionally drained by the hatred that I had. Um, and I had no reason why. I didn't understand where that was coming from. I can just tell you and point at the fact that I was ignorant to everything that was going on um, only because of what I've heard previously. Um, and that's what led me to Islam. Right, but the point I'm saying is that what was that in Islam that won you over, that you liked? That it's a peaceful religion. Yes. What, what, what in Islam <clears throat> that you liked first? I know you gotta like everything, <laughs> but what was For that sure. first thing that sort of created an impact in your mind, in your heart? The fact that Allah, it's the one God. Oh, interesting. Yes, I was searching for the Almighty. I was searching for the one. Um, I knew that after being Christian, um, 
as a child, I grew up being a Christian, and it, it didn't it didn't make sense what I was learning about Christianity, um, about Jesus, and I knew that after Jesus there was something more than that, and that's why I made that further step to learn about Islam, because I learned that Islam it goes further than what Christianity teaches you, and that's when I decided to. It clicked me. It said, um, in something inside of me said, you know what? This makes sense. So the concept of one God. Concept of one God. And the concept Allah. that Jesus, peace be upon him, peace prayed upon to him. this one God. Peace be upon him, yes. <laughs> Jesus, peace be upon him, prayed to this one peace God. Allah. So yes. that started that sort of thoughts and, and started winning your hearts towards reality. Yes. I mean. Interesting. What does your family think, your parents, your family think about you know, accepting Islam? What did your parents have to say about that? My parents, um, they were, first of all, they were in shock. And what religion do they belong to? <laughs> um, they were, they're Christian. Okay. They're still Christian. Uh, but to them it was uh, very shocking because from being a Christian and being very, um, I revealed against Christianity. I stopped going to church. I I stopped dressing like a Christian because of what I was seeing in church. And to me, I felt like it was hypocrisy what was going on at the church. So I revealed against it, and I stopped going to the Christian church. Well, I don't know if it's hypocrisy, but I think it's a lot of ignorance. A lot of people, if they would really practice what Jesus taught, or what Jesus taught, and what he preached. You know, you will see all the commonalities between Islam and uh, yes, I agree. Christianity, as the case may be. But the problem is that people try to modify the Word of God and teach and preach their own thing. And that's what the problem really is. So your parents now, they just willingly accepted you? They opposed you? What happened? They did. They actually... Um First, they were kind of making fun of me. They were like mocking me a little bit. Oh, what did they say in this mockery? <laughs> um, over the, um, the hijab, and they, my stepdad, he will put his shirt over his head and he was like, look at me, I'm a Muslim. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I would say, please don't do that. Um, I appreciate you wouldn't do that because uh, the mother of Jesus, she wore a hijab. Mm -hmm. and, and to me, that's a symbol of respect. Um, so, but more of it, it was because of the way of dressing. And they tried to tell me that Jesus is Christ, that Jesus is Lord and God. And I always try to, to teach them, you know, the reality and the truth about what Islam is about. It, it's not changing the direction of the Almighty, the Lord, the only one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, I had to teach them a little bit. So you did a lot of research, huh? Yes, I did indeed. So you totally understood in your mind that you love Islam and this is what you want to be a Muslim Mashallah. and this is the way of life. Mashallah. You have chosen by the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes, indeed. Interesting, interesting. So is it true that you used to go to mosque even before you accepted Islam? Um, Yes, I actually, I visited a couple of them, maybe two or three, mm -hmm. and I always stayed in the back. I always stayed quiet. Mm -hmm. I, I will pay attention. I'll definitely, I learned to do salat. Mm -hmm. I learned to do my prayers, my five times a day, my prayers. And um, I wanted to be part of the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. So therefore, I started going to different masjid, to different mosques, and um, the one that I found that it was very welcoming to me near my home. It's the one in Pembroke Pines in Hollywood. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that's how you came when you said you want to accept Islam? Yes. Wow, that is interesting. And how did you feel when you started to visit the mosque even though you were not a Muslim? I mean, like meeting the ladies, the sisters. Uh, how did that go down? Well, I was, it was very quiet at first because I didn't speak to any of the sisters. I used to just come in to Juma and then right away just walk away. I wouldn't okay. stop and talk to anyone because I was very, I would say shy. So I just wanted to embrace Islam first and then I wanted to embrace my community. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. But for the sake of Allah, um, 
thanks to him I can say that my sisters were very open hearted to me. They were very welcoming. They made me feel at home. Um, I, I can never walk away from them. I feel very attached to, to them now and day. Right, right. Well, this is really interesting. I must say that you took a real big <laughs> step in your life. Mashallah, <laughs> mashallah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and how do you feel now? Oh, I'm being at a peace. Muslim, and being in the environment. And I'm at peace. I'm at peace with myself. I'm at peace with my environment. I'm at peace with my people, with the non-Muslim, with the Muslims, with the Christians, with my family. I accept everyone in my life. I accept uh, whoever wants to be a part of my life, that they're more than welcome to be part of my life. No discrimination, uh, ethic, religion, nothing. All I can offer is peace, love, and um, that's all I was looking for, to have that feeling of having harmony within myself and uh, being able to offer that as well. Right. Um, I, I, I wanted to ask you, as a person who has accepted Islam, and came into the fold of Islam. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give to non-Muslim, non-Muslim women like yourself before accepting Islam, non-Muslim women who think like that, what would you tell them um, or advise them? To study, to get educated. It's very important. Now, now in day we have pretty much the library in the tip of our fingers. Mm -hmm. We have the internet who gives us access to many, many documents, many information that we didn't have maybe 20, 30, 40 years ago. Um, we, we had to go to a library or even to another country or physically go and get that. Now we can get it in the tip of our fingers through internet. Let's find the one that it's constructive, the one that it's positive. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's very important that to get educated. It's very important. I mean, those Muslim women out there who do not understand, those non-Muslim women, sorry, who do not understand Islam and have these misconceptions about Islam. Indeed. Yes. I really recommend to get educated. That's, that's the main key. Right. And what about the fact that they're telling you, well, I don't think Islam is really the way to go, you're uncomfortable, you're confined, you're not happy, you don't enjoy the life of this world. What would you tell them if they say such things? Um, negative. I, I think that's very um, incorrect. Uh, the way that, we li that I live nowadays, I'm very open-minded. I am very freely to go anywhere I want. I speak to any person. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think we feel restricted. The real, you know, we're not restricted. I mean, there are certain things that we have to take um, that we don't normally do like we used to do it as Christians or non-Christians or no, non-religion, that when we are Muslims, we're more humble. We have more conscious of what we're doing and what we're going to do or say even then. Um, I, I am more of a calm person now. Mm. I am more aware. So to me, it's very important to be uh, a Muslim because I think I can, I need to get educated. And to me, being a Muslim, it's part of my, my education. And uh, I enjoy and I embrace Islam in every aspect. What are some of those things in Islam that really, now that you're a Muslim, what are some of those things in Islam that you really enjoy? Oh, I enjoy going to Juma. I know everything. <laughs> huh? I enjoy going to Juma. Uh -huh. I enjoy going to my Quran classes. Mm -hmm. I enjoy um, learning Arabic. Now it's uh, a third language that I'm taking that mm -hmm. I, I look forward to to finish learning so they can recite the Quran in pure Arabic. Pure Arabic, yes. Inshallah, I look forward to that. So you enjoy learning to read Arabic. Yes. Read the Quran. The Quran. Going to Jumar, Jumar. Educating yourself in Islam. Yes. That is really interesting. So we're going to go on a short break right now. When we come back, I would like to ask you a few questions pertaining to your advice to Muslim women. To Muslim women, yes. Who are not practicing Islam. Okay. Because I think you can be someone 
who could motivate Muslim women who do not exactly. appreciate Islam. Yes. Who are just Muslims. Yes. Yeah, they're born Muslims, they grow up in a Muslim family, but they do not appreciate the values of Islam. They don't know what they're really into. The, 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 the feelings, the happiness, the kind of benefits that they would get in being a Muslim, oh, the kind of peace and happiness. Yes. How you would go about um, convincing them to be a better Muslim or practicing Muslim. Oh, so, sisters, please, yes. So, so when we come back, <laughs> we're going to go on a short break. Inshallah. When we come back, I would love to touch on those issues Definitely. and see what you recommend to Muslim women that will motivate them to appreciate the beauty of being a Muslim. Exactly. All right. So thank you very much. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation with Martha and her journey to Islam. Join Al Hikmat Dawa Services for a 10 day Umrah in Ramadan 2020 from May 2nd to May 12th, 2020. Average cost is $3,000. The group will be led by Sheikh Shafai. For more details, you can contact Al Hikmat Dawa Services at 954 986 0158 or you can email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com. that we got to spread the message to eradicate that hate and that misunderstanding against Islam and Muslims in the world. The beautiful buildings won't do that. Assalamu alaikum. Allah gives hikmat, wisdom to whomsoever He wills. And whomsoever is given wisdom is certainly given a lot of good. Only the people of understanding will benefit from the reminder. Tune in to Al Hikmah TV for kutbas, lectures and Islamic reminders. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With over 20 years of traveling experience, Al Hikmat Services is offering exclusive 2019 tours for India and Dubai. On October 13th through October 23rd, visiting holy sites, Dodge Mahal, and many other historical sites. These groups will be led by Sheikh Shafayat. For more details, you can contact Al Hikmat Dawa Services at 1 800 804 0267 or at 954 986 0158 or you can email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com
Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to my journey to Islam on Al Hikmat TV 24 7 online. Once more, it is a pleasure to have with us in Al Hikmat studio Marta Escobar. And for those of you who were tuned in before we went on the commercial break, Marta is a new Muslim and has an interesting, interesting experience as a Muslim and before becoming a Muslim. So we'll continue our conversation with her. As we said before we went on the commercial break, we want to touch base with her on what advice she would give to Muslim women as to appreciating the fact of being a Muslim, being a Muslim, and how much Marta enjoys being a Muslim and why Muslim women should also enjoy being a Muslim and appreciate the fact that they are Muslims. So, Marta, before we get into that point of your advice to Muslim sisters, you mentioned that um, before accepting Islam, you had a lot of hate towards Muslims and Islam. Then, by God's guidance, you were able to read, study, and understand and seek more about Islam. Hence, today you have accepted Islam by the guidance of God Almighty. Like and uh, now you live Islam, you try your best to practice Islam, study Islam, you go to Jummah regularly, and you are involved Mashallah. in Islam. Yes. After becoming a <coughs> Muslim, what about your friends who were not Muslims? What, <laughs> what kind of reaction did you get from them? We spoke about your parents, yes. but what kind of reaction you got from some of them? Thank you for asking me. That's a good question, actually. Um, very interesting also as well, um, especially the journey with my friends. Mm -hmm. um, in Facebook, I had about 5,000 friends on Facebook. Um, when I became a Muslim openly, I didn't directly say that I was Muslim, mm -hmm. um, but obviously the people that have known me for several years, they saw the change on my Facebook. There were some of them that I felt their, their hatred, their pain. Um, it's obviously part of the ignorance. Um, I didn't take it personally. I didn't take it personally at all. I had some other friends, which I don't have them in my life anymore. Um, but inshallah, God knows what's best for us. He showed me who my true friends were, um, who will stand by me, and who will, who will accept me with m who I am, with what I am becoming. And I, it became very, very, um, really fast, the knowledge of um, the hatred that they had towards me. So the mere fact that you accepted Islam <coughs> they just stopped being friends with you? Yes, and the thing is that they went on my Facebook and posted, um, I hate you. S part of my friends, screw you, Muslim. <laughs> oh, are you kidding? Yes, People yes. who are your good friends? Yes, uh, seven years of friendship, five years of friendship. Um, several years of friendship, our friendship just went down the drain because of that. And it hurt my feelings, but that's when I knew that who really my friend was. Because then they won't know that they, that they're still me, that I haven't changed. But did you try to explain to them your new life, your new lifestyle, becoming a Muslim, what Islam is all about? Oh yes, indeed, I definitely have. I actually wrote them. I have several friends of mine, they're actually into the government and they understand um, who I am and nothing to do because you they mean have they a very work with the US government they have a misconception of uh, what like Islam what, what is what do they do uh, they're in the republican uh, table you know the, the chairman and uh, i used to go to the broward um, tea parties and i was part of their events and i used to host events for the republicans and um, there is a lot of um, you know, <laughs> you kidding? Yes, there's a lot that. So they just got a natural hate for Muslims in Islam. The ones that they have no knowledge about it. Mm -hmm. The ones they have no knowledge, and not even not not them necessarily. The people that works for them, like my, I had a hairdresser, <coughs> and my hairdresser find out that I 
because I used to model and my hairdresser, he found out that I became Muslim. He immediately went on Facebook and posted, I hate you, I hate Muslims, don't ever talk to me again. Whoa. Openly on my Facebook. I have had a lot of bullies on my Facebook. Um, I don't I don't go back and forth. I, I don't I don't do that because that's what they want. They want you to show um, a different colors. They want you to be aggressive because they want to be able to say, that's what Islam is about. That's what Islam is making them do. That's what the religion is all about, about threatening, about hurting. And to me, that's not what Islam is about. So therefore, I am not going to retaliate. I had never retaliated towards anyone, any kind of bullying that I've had on my Facebook or on any social media. Mm -hmm. I have never retaliated. So therefore, we really need to do a lot of work in getting people to better understand I Islam. Mean, I mean, all the misunderstandings, the misconceptions that yes. they have about Muslims and Islam. Yes, there is a lot of work for Dawa. Yes, indeed. Spreading the message of the Quran, Amen. spreading the message of Islam. You know, I, I I tell people that all the time. When you spread the message of Islam. By the mercy of God, you're able to remove some of the doubts and misunderstandings yes. that people have yes. against Islam yes. and against our Holy Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Peace be upon him, yes, indeed. That is so important. That's much why in Al Hikmat, we're so much into Dawah. That's why we have this show, because we want people to better understand Islam. Yes. We indeed. want people to remove those misconceptions that they have. Yes. So amongst your friends now, are there any friends who appreciated you becoming Muslims? Oh, yes, indeed I have. Um, I actually have a gentleman, a friend of mine. He, um, I'm going to keep his name uh, to myself, but he told me that when the government were not paying, uh, when they were not getting paid by the government, they were being fed by Muslims. Mm -hmm. Nobody put that in the news. Actually, it happened here in Florida, in Aventura. And there were, he told me that when he was not being paid, that he didn't have anything to eat, and he was being fed by Muslims. So I was very happy. And after that, he said to me, can you please send me a Quran? I said, most definitely, mashallah, I am more than welcome to send you a Quran. And therefore, I sent him a package. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. sent him a package of the Quran, <coughs> of the book. I sent him on the CD. And I sent him uh, um, about information about Jesus being... Um, prophet of Islam. Prophet of Islam. Peace be upon him. Wow. This is, <laughs> this is really interesting. You know, that really tells us, and I, I really want my, the viewers worldwide, it is so important for you, for us to understand the importance of spreading the message of the Quran, uh, what Sister Martha is saying here. There are a lot of people who have great misconceptions and until we don't spread this message this is our duty God Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us this responsibility Amen. we are the representatives of God on earth and that's Amen. why I tell the viewers worldwide we need to take this responsibility Amen. so now that you are a Muslim how do your parents Digested. We spoke about when you now accepted Islam. Mm -hmm. Yes. But now, after a couple of months that you are a Muslim, how do they treat you now? Oh, alhamdulillah. <laughs> they're very proud of me. They're oh, they very are happy, happy now? Yes, they're very happy. Super, super happy. Um, I asked them, I said, do you want me to be like before or do you want me to be like I am now? And they're like, oh, no, la, la. We want you the way you are right now. We, we love you the way you are right now. I have respect towards my, my parents. I have respect towards the elders. I have respect towards humanity, towards animals, towards, towards life, towards God. There is much, much respect that I have in me, which I didn't have that before. I was lack of being conscious. I was lack of, of love. And that's where the hatred was and the ignorance were taking over me. And um, Alhamdulillah, I'm very blessed that I am a Muslim and I am into Islam and, and there is where I'm going to stay. So you feel like a better human being also? Yes. Wow. The energy is completely different. I wake up in the morning with no pain, no regrets. There's no this uh, darkness in myself. Um, I'm very much alive and this is where I am and I'm very happy to be. 
So what would you tell our Muslim sisters? And why I'm saying that? There are a lot of Muslim sisters who feel, oh wow, why am I a Muslim? I'm so confined. Islam is so hard. Islam is so difficult. What would you tell them as a person who has been a model, paralegal, worked out there, been out in the world, in America for 32 years? Um, what would you tell <clears throat> these sisters that you have come into this world of Islam and how happy you are and how much you enjoy it? How would you go about advising them? What are some of the things you would tell them? Not to get attached to this world. The material aspect that this world offers, it, we don't take it with us. Be, I am so happy being Muslim that I know that when we get to go with, to Jannah with God, we're not taking none of this. And a lot of, I feel that a lot of sisters are leaving Islam behind because they're getting attached to the worldly, to the worldly things. And I think it's a mistake that a woman can do. Just a woman itself to get attached to material things in this mm -hmm, world, mm -hmm. it's not worth it. We lose ourselves in it. And to me, the materials is not important. I think the value of being a Muslim, we have to stay with the Quran, what the Quran says. And it, take, it will take us to a further um, knowledge when it comes down to who we are as Muslims. And I think the sisters shouldn't uh, stop being Muslims or leave Islam behind because of what's going on in the world nowadays. I think it's a big mistake. I don't recommend it to any sister because it doesn't bring you anything positive at all. Do Nothing positive. Do you think positive. that they should feel anyhow inferior that they are Muslim? Not at all. Not at all. We're, nobody is better than anyone, but when it comes down to being a Muslim, we can wear it proud. We mm -hmm. can wear very, very proud, and it's an honor to be a Muslim. Therefore, I don't recommend anyone to walk away from Islam at all. Mm -hmm. And they should all try to study, learn, mm -hmm. and be a better Muslim. Eh? Amen, inshallah. Yes. Wow, wow. Definitely. You know, I know we did not mention this earlier on, but you have been studying about Islam. You read about Islam. How long before you read about Islam, before you publicly and officially accepted Islam because I still remember the day and I was kind of surprised when they told me in the mosque that uh, there is a sister named Martha who mm -hmm. wants to accept Islam. How did you feel that day after we did the recitation of the Shahada and the Kalima and I remember you were reading it on the mic. You were on the lady side. Yes. And you had the microphone. Yes. Because we couldn't see. We were on this side. And you had the man. How did you feel after that? How did you feel during that? After that, when you officially accepted Islam in front of hundreds of people on a Friday after Juma Salah? It's a it's an overwhelming feeling, um, but positive. Um, it took me. It was very emotional <coughs> to me. It was very emotional to feel that I am welcome. That I am. That I feel that I am at home. Mm -hmm, I mm -hmm. finally made it home. It's like coming back to your town after so many years being away. And finally, and finally you're there. Wow, I know. That is <laughs> nice. I, I, I can sense it's from your heart. So you felt very much at home, very much welcomed. Yes, I did. Um, my sisters, they came and hugged me. They welcomed me. Um, Salma, she, she's very, very good to me. All the sisters are very loving to me. I wouldn't want to go anywhere else. Wow. I always look forward to be with them on Juma. Um, I, I can't I explain it with words the feeling that it, they make me feel. They make me feel like they're truly, truly my, my, my blood, mm -hmm. my blood, my sisters. And, um, and I can count on them. When I felt sick, they have gone to me. They have taken me soup. I don't feel well. She goes over there, Sama. Um, she takes soup to me if I don't feel well. They, they take care of me. They are my sisters, and I'm really, really thankful for that. I'm graceful, and I'm very thankful. Mashallah, I'm very, very thankful for them. Well, that's the blessings of God. So Alhamdulillah. In addition to studying Islam, practicing Islam, reading the Quran, you feel that love, that affection, that comfortability among the sisters and mm. in the community. Amen. Mashallah. Wow, wow. I have that. 
And do you share that with your family? Oh, yes, I do indeed. Uh -huh. I have brought my daughter with me. I uh -huh. have brought my daughter with me along, and she have met Sama. Um, they see me, how I am very um, involved. Mm -hmm. I'm very much involved, and I look forward to be even more involved in the community. I, I look forward to complete my five pillars. I look forward to go to Umra. I look forward to go and to the Holy Land. I look forward to do all those things with my community, with my brothers and sisters around me because they give me, um, they give me peace in my life and that's where I want to be. So I wouldn't miss that for any, anyone in this life. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I, I, this is what I want, and this is what I look forward to, to live my life in Islam. So you see a different joy. Oh, yes. A different happiness in the reality of life. Oh, yes. That is interesting. It, it just, oh, like, it's so much. <laughs> you cannot even describe the feeling mm -hmm. that it mm -hmm. just takes me by joy, definitely. I look every day, I look forward to get up and and come over here to, to be with Sama, to go to the masjid, to, to be part of uh, the community. That's what I look forward every day, to involve myself in as much as I can, mm -hmm. in a positive way each and every time. Good, good, good. So Inshallah. I would also like to see, and now that you have accepted Islam, and you're here w with al Hikmat offering your services, with Al Hikmat, how do yes. you feel doing, you know, Islamic work with Al Hikmat? Uh, <laughs> how do you feel? It? Well, you know, being a Muslim and then now you're with an Islamic organization involved in Dawa and all the. How how do you like it? Oh, I'm so proud. I I wear it. I wear it very proudly. If we can have uniforms to say that I work over here, I'll be even more. I'm so proud to be a part of Al Hikmah. I am proud of being pr uh, part of the Masjid also of your community as well as you had always welcomed me from the first day that you met me. Mm -hmm. I'm very thankful, I'm, I'm very honorable to be part of your community. They have opened their homes to me. I've had dinner with your family. I have eat lunch with your family. So to me, be a part just of here in the office, it's another extension of my family. Interesting. Because, you know, I had seen you maybe once or twice uh, before you accepted Islam, and I thought you were Muslim. <laughs> I really thought that you were Muslim. And then when they said that Martha wants to accept Islam, I'm like, which Martha? <laughs> <laughs> Because even before you officially and formally accepted Islam, you were carrying about yourself like a Muslim. Inshallah, alhamdulillah. You, you had already found the peace and satisfaction, huh? Yes, yes, indeed. I have taken, I have uh, accepted my path, mm -hmm. and therefore I was embracing it. So, yes. so at the end of the day, you don't feel like a foreigner being a Muslim any, anymore? No, not at all. <coughs> not at all. Wherever I go and I see a Muslim, I certainly give them salam. I greet them. I introduce myself. Wherever I go, a Muslim brother, a Muslim sister, or even if they're not, I always give a blessing to the person that I speak to on my daily basis. Mm -hmm. So what else would you like to share? with our viewers we got viewers worldwide and i mean Indeed. worldwide people look at this Masha show Allah. all over the world and i'm sure you will be a great motivation to our muslims and uh, muslims worldwide into a better understanding of islam yes. and people like you surely motivate other people what else would you like to suggest tell people share with our viewers i just think we have to we have to be open-minded we have to be a little bit more open-minded. Uh, study, study uh, more than what we know because I think that will help us understand more what it's Islam about. And not just that, the simple fact that we're humans, that we're humans aside to all the religions. Forget that we are different, it has different name to our, our beliefs in the Almighty. We all at the end are brothers and sisters because we all come from the Creator. Therefore, to me, it's more being more understandable and more, more good to the other human. It doesn't matter what religion we are, to me, but Islam is part of it. So I, I will tell the people to study.
to learn to if the Quran you don't understand the Quran get it in the language that you can understand it it will still not change what the Quran says it will it will give you the right information it will not take you any other direction but just the, the one that it is that it's the Almighty our only God mm -hmm. and all I can say is just to study to study and it will take you out from the darkness from what people think that Islam is about because that's the wrong misconception that we all have about Islam the mere fact that people do not read the Quran yes that's the biggest downfall in the world today yes. for Muslims and non-Muslims that's what you're saying yes and that's what you do you read the Quran a lot and you try to get better understanding I mean, I'm sure. from the Quran yes. and the understanding in Islam yes um, I know we got to conclude in a few minutes but we did not really go down a little bit in your life before you accepted Islam. Oh, Is there anything sure. you'd like to share with our viewers and now that you have accepted Islam, you know, what an impact it has made in your life and, you know, where you came from. Normally we would have done that in the beginning, but I, I thought it's nice that we could get this to a point, seeing that we got a few minutes yes. on the show. Um, I come from a very mixed background. Uh -huh. um, I grew up pretty much half of my years, not half of my years, but when I was a child, I was a Catholic. I was raised with nuns, school just for girls. Mm -hmm. So there was some peculiar feeling towards the nuns that I had, and I used to chase them around, and they, they would be like, you're gonna go to hell. <laughs> so I was like, you too? Yeah. <laughs> so they were like, oh, that bad child, that's such a bad child. Um, I used to bully the nuns, so um, after just having fun with them. Yeah. Yes, I was. I was a very naughty child with the nuns, but mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Inshallah, um, he knew what he was doing. Then we became Christian, and after I became Christian, I said, there's something that I, I don't understand what's going on. Then I became pagan. Then I was interested in Hinduism, mm -hmm. in Buddhism. And then at the end, I was like, let me just find out about it, spirit, spiritualism. And I was like, no, there's something more in there that it's not fulfilling me, mm -hmm. that it needs to, there's something missing in my life. And that's when I saw the brother in Facebook and he said, ask me about Islam. The only Muslim over 5,000 people that I had on my Facebook. And after that, now I have so about a thousand. So you tried all different things, yeah? Yes. All kind of religion. Yes. You, you were really seeking, huh? I was really seeking. Yes, I was. Uh, okay, okay. So you had, mm, yeah. you got involved in the things like black magic and all yes. these things? Yes, black magic, green magic, white magic. At the end, it's still not. you kidding. You were just <laughs> exploring the world, I yes. must say. Yes, yes. This is interesting. This mm -hmm. is interesting. Well, thank you very much. It has really been a pleasure to have My you pleasure. with us in Al Hikmat studio and to share your life history, your journey to Islam with our viewers worldwide. I'm sure they would benefit a lot. Mashallah. Your advice, your experience, Subhanallah. your emotion, Amen. your love for Islam and the Muslims. Amen. And I just wish that people like you can be very mo uh, motivational to other people. I do not only no, wish mashallah. that, but I'm sure it will happen. Inshallah. I'm sure it will happen. And this show, Look everyone that to. sees this show worldwide, you will get the blessings. Amen. I'm telling Amen. you, Amen. every non-Muslim that hears you and realize that they have a major misconception about Islam, and here is a sister who came from that different uh, lifestyle, is now mm -hmm. into Islam. Okay. I think that's phenomenal. Yeah. And I'm sure that you will be a great blessing for yourself, for the world, and a blessing for us in Al-Hikmat, a blessing for your family mm -hmm. and everyone else. Thank you so, so thank very you much. thank you once more for being on the show, Al-Hikmat, my journey to Islam, and it has been a pleasure thank talking so to Mata Escobar on my journey to Islam on Al-Hikmat TV 24-7 online. Stay tuned to Al-Hikmat, and we do hope that you spread this message Send this show and this link to whoever you know, wherever the world, so we can all join in the blessings of people understanding Islam and removing the misconception that they have 
about Islam and Muslims. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. With over 20 years of traveling experience, Al Hikmat Services is offering exclusive 2019 tours for India and Dubai. On October 13th through October 23rd, visiting holy sites, Daj Mahal, and many other historical sites. These groups will be led by Sheikh Shafayat. For more details, you can contact Al Hikmat Dawa Services at 1 800 804 0267 or at 954 986 0158 or you can email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com <laughs>
For more details, you can contact Al Hikmat Dawa Services at 954 986 0158 or you can email us at alhikmat at alhikmat.com.